G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Frontier Pilot Simulator. This is a game that I have been following for well over a year at this point. I've been playing around with it here and there as it's been going through its development. It is taking a little while to develop because the entire game and everything you're about to see has been created by one person. So yeah, single man dev team. Just keep that in mind. So anyways, what is Frontier Pilot Simulator? Well, it's Elite Dangerous in an Atmosphere. Uh, for those of you who have been watching my content for a while, you'll recall a video I did on DCS a little while back talking about a, a game that I would like to play that is essentially in a civilian helicopter sim flying around doing civilian jobs. That is very close to being what this is, only in the future on an alien world in another star system. So, we'll start off by doing a bit of a job here. We, um, we have been given a mission. We've got to pick up some rations, um, and we're going to deliver them to a nearby base. Pretty straightforward, not a huge amount of travel. I think we've only got a couple of kilometers to go. I'll see the distance here in a second once we're loaded up. All the cargo, as you can see, is a physical object that has to go inside your ship, and 2.8 kilometers. There we go, that's our destination point. Short distance, but the VTOL we're flying doesn't have a particularly long range, and it doesn't have a particularly large lift capacity either. And we are up. I'm just going to try and hold it into a hover here. Um, flying the VTOL. Um, I'm actually flying with a Xbox controller at this point. Um, the game does recognise HOTAS controls, it does recognise my Thrustmaster Warthog, but it's clearly designed for the moment around uh, flying with a controller, and a lot of the key binds and the key options are still a work in progress. So actually flying with the HOTAS isn't completely comfortable just yet. But it does fly well on the, on the Xbox controller if you happen to have one. Now, actually flying the machine. Well, if you look at the HUD, you can see it's divided into sort of two circles. If you look at the right-hand side inner circle, or yeah, inner bar on the, the HUD, you can actually see my current throttle output. Now, the vertical line in sort of the, the orangey, pale, ambery color, that's, uh, you'll see it pop up there. Now I've dropped the throttle back. That is the amount of thrust that's required to maintain a hover. And you can see I'm increasing and decreasing my throttle as nests as needed to be able to fly around. And the reason for this is there are weather effects. Lift is modelled. Updrafts, downdrafts and so on are modelled. The weight, the cargo we have on board, it's not just a physical item that's got to go into the hull. It has a weight and a mass that you have to take into account while you're flying around. And it will make the a heavier payload will make the the VTOL far more difficult. I'm just gonna try and not mess up this landing. And break, 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 break. There we go. Um, a, a heavier payload will make it significantly more difficult to fly to the point where you can get some payloads that will completely overdo the engines. I'm just gonna sell off the rations, which will complete this quest. Or mission. Alright, and that's that one unloaded. Now, as soon as the unloading is complete, we're going to pick up a new cargo, and we're probably going to have to grab some fuel while we're here as well. So, first things first, let's load up these empty G-type batteries. These will be our next cargo, because there is a base not far from where we started that will purchase the empty ones and turn them into full ones. And that is us fully loaded up with fuel as well. Cool. Okay, so we are ready to now depart. However, this time we're not actually running a mission, so we're not going to have a waypoint. So we better put one in. And uh, bridge point down here is where we're going. Empty D-type batteries is one of their necessary items. So that is our waypoint set. And yeah, as you can see, they produce full G-type batteries. We can't actually move those because they are incredibly heavy when they're done. Um, even upgrading this particular VTOL, it doesn't have enough engine power to be able to reliably move them. We need a bigger VTOL if we're going to start moving those. But we can supply the empty batteries for them so that they can produce what they need perfectly fine. Get a little bit of speed up this time. 
lean into it a little. We can see our airspeed going up, which is nice. Get it back to stabilize, because we need to make sure we've got enough time to slow down, because momentum and all of that. And we have one other cool little option right here. So, as you can see, we've now got a screen full of colored arrows. This is the, well, the atmosphere surrounding us, the direction of wind, um, the speed the wind is traveling at, the direction it's traveling at. So you can see here we've got a soft southerly coming in off the ocean, up into the mountains. It is slowly increasing as it's coming off the low water and going up into the high. And if you look over in the distance beyond Bridge Point, you'll see we've got some green arrows. You'll see, actually, we've got some up in the sky as well. So a little bit further around, we've got some uh, higher wind speeds and we've got a, um, I suppose, a jet stream going directly over the top of the island where things are just a little bit quicker. This is soft watch out what I'm doing here on this landing. Um, this is relatively soft atmospheric conditions. It's quite comfortable to fly around in. You can get full-on blizzards, thunderstorms, lightning storms if you travel near volcanoes, and I'll be doing that in a moment because this island's covered in them. Um, you'll get updrafts that are so hot they can ignite your engines on fire. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, generally, the atmosphere is one of the major opponents that you'll have to face in Frontier Pilot Simulator. It can be really aggressive. So cargo sold. Now, there's nothing we can really pick up from here because the only thing they sell is those completed G-Type batteries, and they're too heavy. So, what we're going to do, because I want to get enough money up to be able to do some upgrading, so we're going to go back over here to the the base we started at and we're going to pick up some more rations deliver them to the next point and just repeat the sequence once again now with these arrows up i'll leave them up for a little bit but if you watch me flying around and watch the direction you're traveling in you'll actually see that they are pushing the vtol around if you're flying at low speeds and if you're even if you're flying at high speeds they will cause a drift that you need to take into account while flying it's one of the coolest features of this particular game and it will change depending on where you fly we're nice and calm here the other side of the island could be an absolute shit show of a storm they're around said updrafts around volcanoes or anything that generates a lot of heat you'll get shifting weather conditions you can use it to your advantage if you can find a good jet stream that goes between one point and another point you can um you can get the vtol into the jet stream and ride the jet stream to the destination alternatively if you're trying to come from one place and go to another place we can get ourselves back up in the air now oops wrong button just going to set a waypoint, uh, even though it's only over the ridge line, just so you can see where we are going. And actually, while we're here, this isn't the whole map. This is just the tutorial area, the island that you start on. If we uh, scroll out and we start getting down a bit this way, you see we've got a small island, it's in the middle of the ocean, and then we have a massive landmass down here with you know, different bases and different locations you can travel to and different terrain features, flats, valleys, canyons, and we will eventually get down there as well. To make that trip, we need a different VTOL. We need one that's capable of transitioning into an aircraft mode to be able to make that flight, and the one we currently have can't do that. There's some passengers there as well, so we might look and see if we can pick up a passenger after we do this run and do some passenger runs, because you can do that as well. There will be people waiting around some spaceport. Sometimes you'll get... Um, so we've got a available up there as well. Um, sometimes you'll get requests and missions to go and pick somebody up from a location or pick up a cargo from a location, so... Yeah. Let's get back in the air. line cleared nicely and you sort of see there as I'm holding the, um, the position neutral the you see the drift if you follow the um, the 
uh, I suppose the, the vortex lines off the wingtips. That's not me giving inputs, that's me pushing into the wind and the wind pushes back. Actually lost a little bit too much height here, but it's alright. Got plenty of space to correct. have ourselves okay, sold a bit of a mission offer here captain I urgently have to go to Nord can you imagine they're out of my country 1500 credits is yours well certainly we can do that well I did say that we we're looking for a passenger mission and so we have one um, exit out here no, that's what we're after Alright, so we have our pickup just over here, and that is the passenger area for this particular uh, spaceport. Now, each of the. Well, uh, spaceport. Shit, button. Um, spaceport's probably not the right term here. Futuristic airport? I, I guess that would actually be correct. Um, r regardless, each of these ports that you land at has a slightly different layout and will have different things in different places, but most of them will have a cargo terminal, a main landing pad, and a passenger transport area. I'm not so sure of the O, H, and S, uh, situation. Yeah, 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 I'm opening your door. Relax. Of having the passenger waiting on the pad of an active airport, but it is what it is. It's kind of cool there, and you'll actually see them get on board, so I'm not complaining. All right. So. Now. Nord is up here. And yeah, no, we've got full fuel, so we'll be fine. Shouldn't be too far out. Our range really is that short, and this is where we start getting into a little bit more fun terrain. So once we clear the ridge line up here, oh, there's a sample there. We might have to come back and collect that at some point. We now have active volcanoes, and you can see the updrafts and the the, uh, the the red heat markings and the high-speed updrafts that are surrounding it. We don't want to go into that. That'll actually destroy our engines and kill us, so let's not do that. You'll also see similar stuff. It's not quite as, um, as insane as around the volcanoes, but around these geysers that is launching up. So you've got these uh, amber updrafts for medium temperature updrafts. I do like the little radio transmissions that you hear every now and again as well. Please. Trying to keep a nice stable flight here because we have a passenger on board. If you are rough with the plane, the passengers will sometimes complain as well. So. There we go, how gentle a landing was that? Alright, so here is one of the problems with the the um, the game itself, uh, as it currently stands in its current stage of development. The key binds to try and trigger stuff off are a pain in the ass. they really are. Um, get back through, there is a cockpit view as you can see, but there is no track IR support as of yet. And, as I said, until you can sort of get the HOTAS working properly, there's not a huge point to using it. Anyways, we've got another passenger right here, right now, that we can pick up and take somewhere. The question is, can we actually get them on board? Because this is a pain in the ass to do. Alright, so now we've got the prompt. Now, you've got to hold left throttle, plus the right shoulder plus A 
in order to activate it. However, hitting the left throttle tries to start the engines, which will take off and cancel the launch. Hitting A will try and start off a trade uh, menu that doesn't exist because there's no trade option sitting right here. And the right shoulder button normally will try and change through thrust modes. So you've got to find the right combination to press that doesn't involve you actually taking off or trying to issue a command that the game doesn't. There we go. The, the game accepts. It's a pain in the ass. Honestly, and, and unfortunately you can't move the mouse cursor over and just click I want that option or have a, you know, press A or anything like that. It, it doesn't have a context for it yet. So that is something that definitely needs to be addressed because it's annoying as hell. Um, but yeah. And that's going to take us back down here to Bridgepoint. So a little bit of dicking around, but that mission is probably going to be worth our while. Although, all, right, all of your ships have insurance, so if you crash a ship, you're automatically given a new one. However, you can potentially lose some upgrades on your ship in the process. This ship doesn't have any upgrades, so let's just fly into this, uh, these red markers and show you what happens when you are, if you're not watching where you're flying in the atmosphere in this. Yep, those engines are screwed. I have no thrust left. Ship's destroyed. Maybe shouldn't have done that with a passenger on board, but who cares. Anyways, whenever that happens, you get ejected from your ship into a pod, and the pod will automatically make its way back to whatever the nearest, you know, star base is or uh, airport is that has a facility for taking escape pods. Usually it's whichever one has a repair facility available. So you can see it coming down here and there will be a landing pad for escape pods just below us, that tower just there. So we're gonna land on that tower and once we do, we're gonna go straight into the repair hangar over here where we'll be issued with our insurance replacement spacecraft, which is only gonna cost us like 300 credits anyway. Fast way to get back, but we've got the rest of our money still sitting here. So now we can actually do some upgrades and I can do a little bit of a demo of that system because all of your ships, your VTOLs in this are completely modular. Not only can you get new and I think there's four, it might be five different VTOLs currently. I can't remember the exact count. Apologies for that, but I cannot rem remember the exact count at the moment, but each one of them can be upgraded, and there are multiple levels of upgrades for each one. So, we're going to start off by doing a bit of an engine change over here, because the engines we've got are garbage. Nowhere near enough thrust, we can't reliably lift anything that's heavy. Much bigger. Now, what we want to do is fix this fuel problem, because we're burning through fuel too quickly, so these X2 batteries, plus 800 for our, to our fuel limits, Yep, the fuel is measured in power from batteries. Don't ask me how that works. I'm not going to question it. It's fuel. And there we go. The tanks are topped up. Okay, so next... We will grab ourselves an upgraded chassis. Now, the chassis upgrade isn't actually a replacement for the fuselage. What it does is replaces your undercarriage and makes it more tolerant. This is actually important as well, because if you want to take heavier payloads, you're going to have heavier landings, whether you like it or not. No matter how gently you put down, the force applied to the landing gear is actually going to increase. And you will get to a point where you, have a, you might build a VTOL that has engines that are powerful enough to lift a cargo, but wheels that aren't powerful enough or aren't strong enough to be able to actually tolerate the weight and simply landing even gently will cause your VTOL damage. And there we go. We have a nice fresh toy. It gets dropped off out in front of the hangar. And looks like we have just been given another mission offer, and this one we don't have to accept, it's by default. We're going to go to Nord, and we're going to pick up some goods and bring them back to the spaceport. Okay. 
So Nord's where we just came from. Right. And you can see straight away, much heavier landing gear, much larger engines, and this time we have a lot more power with the upgrades. So, we're going to go over here and we're going to pick up this container and bring it back. Now, as you play through the game, you'll get more and more missions like this. You'll get missions to try and collect people that have been stranded because they've had accidents. There's cockpit view for everybody who's wondering. Um, you know, people that have had accidents, uh, emergency uh, supplies that need to be transferred because it's probably best if we... Don't fly the volcano this time. Um, yeah, emergency supplies that need to be transferred because somebody's lost all their supplies and they're about to starve to death. All kinds of, you know, civilian type jobs. You know, search and rescue, uh, emergency resupply, and just general transport transfers. Playing passenger, uh, playing, uh, playing passenger liner. There are some upgrades that are specific for certain jobs, so you can customize some of the later VTOLs into being more efficient at doing some particular jobs over others. And as the game is in, still in development at this point in time, there's probably going to be a lot more of that going on as time goes on. New VTOLs are added, more jobs are added, and potentially the map even expanded at this point. It's taking a little bit of getting car, getting comfortable with the new engines. These are significantly more power, are powerful, so I don't need to apply quite so much thrust in order to be able to get a smooth glide. And they are slightly more twitchy because we don't have any extra weight on. We've got a hell of a lot more power available. I just cannot get it to rotate. Come on. Fine, 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 fine. I'll just taxi it around to pick up our cargo. It is worth noting, we can use the external cameras for this too if we wanted to. There is an external rear view car uh, camera so you can back up to the cargo without having to guess. Oh, I completely forgot. <laughs> It is a heavy cargo. Oh, thanks. Could have mentioned that. Um, now, fuel-wise, we're doing fine now. The battery upgrades seem to do us. Whoa. Yep, that is a heavier cargo. Um, set ourselves a waypoint, because I'm going to want that. Ten minutes. All right, so this is a timed mission. We've got ten minutes to get the cargo to destination. I don't think that'll be a problem. Yeah, we're using nearly full power on these engines to be able to lift it around. On the previous engines, we wouldn't have been able to complete this mission. Although we were given this mission the second we upgraded the engines, so that's likely why we were given it. Let's give the volcano a nice wide berth. Cargo spaceway, CF-13 completes landing, spaceport, keep your distance. Okay, so, um, yes. Some of these airports that we have been landing at are actually spaceports. The one we're going to is one of them. You will occasionally have starships that will come in from orbit, large cargo ships, and that will land at them. You can see, just for a split second there in the background, there's a bit of a shadow. Um, you will see them come in and land every now and again, and then they will take off, head back to orbit. Sometimes they will move between starports. Sometimes you'll have missions where you have to land or deliver supplies or cargo onto them. There it is, at the uh, sort of the, the background, just over the mountain. That is a massive cargo spaceship that's just come in for landing. So we could potentially now get some missions related to moving cargo to that. And then it will at some point take off and do the rest of its thing. So that happens. And this occasionally happens as well. So we've just had a snap change in the weather. Uh, turbulent winds coming from the north. Um, 
So we've got a bit of a blizzard blowing over the tops of the mountains here as well. And we're getting pushed to the left, but it's alright. Mass comes into it again here as well. We're carrying a fairly heavy load, so the wind wasn't able to blow us around as much as it potentially could have. And because we can get down behind the mountains in here, we're out of the wind. It's still blowing a gale, but we're actually shielded by the island itself, so we can nick into the terrain to look for potential cover. I'm just going to poke my head up over the top here very gently. I don't want to get too high because I'll get caught in that blizzard and it'll drag me up. Down to about 50% fuel, so I think we'll land here. I'll drop off the cargo and then I think we'll uh, roll around and grab some fuel and I might end the video here for the moment. So anyways ladies and gents this has been Frontier Pilot Simulator. I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed a look at it. It is in development at this point. It is available on Steam of course and um, it's, it's pretty good especially considering all of this has been made by one person. It's actually kind of great. A little bit off aim there but that's alright. I'll taxi it back around for the drop position. It did have a few issues earlier on in development, as you would expect from any you know, sort of indie in development game, especially one with such a small team as one. But uh, most of that has been fixed at this point in time. There is just some, probably some control optimization that needs to be done around HOTAS. I'd like to see some track IR support for the uh, for the cockpit mode, and um, obviously some of the other control options for uh, like yeah, interacting with some of the the text, mission context, um, you know, just the ability to move the mouse cursor over and select an option would be nice there as well. But um, yeah, really that's about it, and it, otherwise it plays perfectly fine. And I'm doing a terrible job of landing here, so I'm just going to back it up. Hope you've enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like to see me flying some more of this, because I'm most certainly going to be playing more of it in the background. And until next time... Remember to click that like button if you do, share and subscribe if you would like to see more, and as always, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.